Hello, Al. I'm Rhetorical Monkey's dad. This is in reply to your video titled, Free Will Doesn't Matter. Have you ever heard someone exclaim, Wow, she is phenomenal. Well, the fact is, we are all phenomenal in the sense that we are all natural phenomena. We have scientists that study the phenomena of the sun and we have scientists that likewise study human phenomena. Furthermore, sociology, psychology, and neurology, in the sense of studying brain function, couldn't be sciences if the will of a human wasn't determined by the laws of cause and effect. But the fact is, no human can make a choice that goes above and beyond physical or divine necessity or causal law. That is to say, all acts of choice performed by humans are acts performed strictly in accordance to physical or divine necessity or causal law, that is, we don't have free will. In this day and age, the person born in the U.S. will likely grow up to be a cow-eating Christian, the person born in India will likely grow up to be a cow-worshipping Hindu. The variability we see is the result in the variability in environmental circumstances. No two individuals have the same personal experiences from the cradle to the grave. At no time would a scientist find it necessary to compound the explanation of individual differences with a pseudo-scientific free will hypothesis. We need to apply Occam's razor to eloquent and rhetorical explanations of free will just as scientists do. You'll note that I'm not arguing for or against a belief in a god here. This fact being stated, I find it humorous that most religious folk claim nothing can happen that opposes God's will, nor can anything happen that is contrary to God's omniscience. But they turn around in contradiction of that claim and say the human will is free from the laws of cause and effect. Likewise, I find it humorous, or maybe I should say sadly ironic, that atheists claim not to believe in a God but they believe one of the primary teachings of nearly every religion. In fact, teaching the notion of free will is the very foundation of Christianity. How can the promise of eternal bliss for some and the threat of eternal damnation for the rest be justified unless free will is assumed to be true? Okay, back on track and away from the humor and irony. The will is not free. You know this. Or to me you seem to be aware of these facts anyway. But something you don't seem to be aware of is the importance of individuals realizing that the will is not free. Tom Clark of WWW Naturalism Org worked in a treatment center for drug addicts. He noticed that a primary factor involved in people becoming addicted to drugs was the notion of free will. The drug addicts felt that if they yielded to peer pressure or curiosity, then the meth, cocaine, morphine, or whatever could be quit at the slightest whim because they firmly believed they had free will. Tom became so concerned over the problems inherent to the belief that he left his job and now dedicates all his time to the Center for Naturalism. He tries to educate individuals so that they can be aware of causal agents that have dire consequences and so that they can be a little more forgiving to themselves and others. The largest and most powerful aggregation of behavior modification specialists in the world work for the advertising industry. I understand that the majority of the cost for most products in this country goes towards packaging and advertising, not the product itself. Of course, if individuals truly had free will, advertising would be a vain enterprise. As it is, advertising is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, business in the world. Words and images affect individuals' mental processes because the will is not free from the laws of cause and effect. But, of course, the brain defends itself against alien ideas just as the body defends itself against foreign objects. That is the reason religious groups like to indoctrinate children as early as possible. And I suspect that the person who hears or reads this post will automatically reject the facts you're in without giving the matter second thought, should the facts happen to be alien to his or her present mindset. Nevertheless, a seed has been planted that may grow and prosper in the fertile mind of a rationalist but undoubtedly will wilt in the rock-hard mind of a fundamentalist. Free will is an illusion. Humans have been able to overcome many illusions during their evolutionary history. And a belief in God is probably less costly to understanding the reality of our situation than is a belief in free will. Thank you very much for your time and attention in this very important matter. Oh, by the way, Al, I really enjoy your videos. Keep up the good work. And again, check out www.naturalism.org for more information on the problems inherent to your belief in free will. Bye for now, my internet friend.